and it's just uh and renee davenport uh just thank you for wanting to be a part of what god is doing um and so i'm going to turn it over to brother fred as we talk tonight about walking in our identity our identity or who we are uh and that that my heart begins to leap uh when when i say those words because i do believe that it's time to uh to get up and begin to move uh, by the spirit and begin to to walk in those things that that god has for us and and who we are in christ jesus so i'm going to turn it over to brother fred the short title of the message tonight is Walking in Your Identity. The long title, because it's specifically related to the topic, and that is Walking in Your Identity as an Overcomer. Mm -hmm. So whatever your identity is, whatever you perceive your identity, I believe this will help you walk in your identity. But we're especially focusing on uh, your identity as an overcomer. And I want to say that in the last few weeks, we have covered a number of topics. We've covered some general uh, categories of identity. This could be your identity as a friend of God or as a royal priest. We also realize that your identity has some very unique things about it. And so we talked about your calling. And then uh, and the last time we met, we talked about uh, refining or redefining your identity through relationships. So your identity, uh, and I want to make this very uh, clear, this is important, that your identity is changing over time. Uh, it's not a static concept. And you might think, well, I know who I am. And uh, well, that may be good, but do give God an opportunity to change you, to make some changes. You know, his number one priority is to change you uh, into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. we are to imitate God. And therefore, we are to be interested in changes and changes in ourselves. And so I'm going to say this and make a bold proclamation that I believe this is a uh, uh, the, the most important message I've ever ministered, uh, mm -hmm. and there is so much to it, and, and I pray that you will mm -hmm. open your heart and receive what God has for you, mm -hmm. and that uh, you will uh, be open uh, to some new thoughts and some new concepts. Amen, amen. Now, problems, problems are in the fleshly realm, and God is in a different realm than that, and God has no problems but he has a strategies, a divine strategies for you to deal with the problems that uh, you encounter. Uh, this is very important about overcoming. You can overcome, let me tell you this, you can overcome every problem situation that you face, but you may not be able to change it and overcome it uh, and in, a static definition of who you are. You may have to change who you are because we are being changed. Second Corinthians 3, 18 says we are being changed, changed from, from glory, glory to glory. Let's say that on average, we need a thousand upgrades to be like Jesus. This is all about becoming <laughs> like Jesus. Well, that, that may be we need to change er, every day. We need to be making changes every day, maybe multiple changes every day. So the real key word in this uh, message tonight is change. Ooh, uh, don't, don't be satisfied uh, where you are. God wants to change you. He wants to make you like Jesus as he is. So are we on the earth. Mm, amen. And Paul said, I haven't yet arrived, but I'm still pressing on. Ooh, and I, hallelujah. I believe that's the way I am. And I hope you see yourself there that you haven't yet arrived, but that you're pressing on. And if you've arrived, well, good, good for you. But <laughs> I, 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 I want to keep pressing on. Amen. And one of the things I know is going to happen is that I'm going to have to overcome some things that come my way. We're always living uh, with circumstances. Circumstances are coming and some of them are not good. 
but we can overcome every mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it may be that we have to get closer to God and find out our identity and operate out of our identity in the situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start um, with the anatomy of your identity as an overcomer. Mm -hmm. And I want to say there are three components here that are really important in knowing who you are. And the first is your personality, second is your culture, and third are your relationships personality, culture, and relationship. So we'll go through these. Uh, and your personality is basically your voice. Mm. It's uh, your, mm. what you think, your attitude, the words that you speak. And your culture is uh, where you're born, uh, where you live, what you're doing, uh, your purpose. And your relationships are pretty self-explanatory. It's the God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What kind of relationships mm, do you have with mm, them? And what kind of relationships mm, do you have with spiritual people? Right. Well, I'm going to start with this verse because this is the verse that is core uh, to this uh, message tonight. And this is 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Even, even our faith. Now, the reason this is such a critical verse is that I believe many times we have misinterpreted what this verse was really saying. Whoever is born of God, well, let me tell you, your outer man is not born of God. <laughs> your outer man it, it go, it can be traced back to Adam. Your outer, outer, outer man can be traced back to the sin of Adam. Uh, but the inner man, your spirit man, is born from above. Amen. So your culture is that you are born from above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is your fa father. He's your father. And uh, he's a spirit. And that is John 4, verse 24. And uh, Hebrews 12, 9 says that he is the father of spirits. So when it says, whoever is born of God, that means your spirit man. So who is the overcomer in your life? It's your spirit man mm. is the overcomer mm. in your life. And the culture that he is in is the kingdom, kingdom. culture. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So if you want to operate in a worldly culture, you're not an overcomer. Because what this verse says, you've got to be born again of the spirit by uh, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the God gives you new birth, uh, oh, born God again, is. and that, that's who you're born, the one that's born of God is a new creation, a new creature, oh, hallelujah. glory to God, hallelujah. So the new creature, the new you, the spirit man, that is your identity of an overcomer, so when you want to look at how am I going to overcome this problem that's coming my way? You have to go inside of you because that's your culture. Mm, your culture mm. is no longer the state that you're born in. It's not uh, new, uh, uh, not Texas. It's not uh, New Mexico. It's not California. It's not North Carolina. It's not Georgia. It, you're born from above and your culture is the kingdom. And when you realize that, then you are ready to become that overcomer that God has made you to be. Whoever is born of God overcomes That's the, the world. world. Now, also in uh, 1 John 4, 4, it says, uh, for you have, are of God, little children, because you've overcome them, because greater is he that is in you, you than he that is in the world. world. Hallelujah. So how are we able to overcome every problem we face because of who's inside of us? Greater is he that's inside of you than he that is in the world. Now, in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, if we wanted to find God, well, we would go to the temple, or we would go to a priest, or we would go to a prophet. But if we want to find God in the New Testament, we look inside, because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so now, when we talk about the per your personality, we're not talking about your natural personality. We're not talking about the personality 
of your outer man. We're talking about the personality of the inner man. Oh, hallelujah. And we're talking about his thought life, his attitude, mm. and the words that come out of him. And so if the mm. words that you're speaking are, are of anger and of, uh, and of defeat and of oppression, those are not words from your kingdom. Mm. Those are not words from your culture. Those are words from the old man. Oh, uh, but if you Jesus. take the attitude of Christ, uh, then you will speak the words of Christ. You will speak the living word mm -hmm. and, and you will change situations. Mm -hmm. So I want you to realize this is a new definition of who the overcomer is in your, in your life. It's, it, it's the new spirit. It's the spirit man within you and the spirit man within you has some relationships with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And how strong are those relationships? To be an overcomer, you have to have strong relationships with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And not only that, you need strong relationships with people around you, spiritual Amen. people I'm talking about. Amen. Who will see you as an overcomer. Tonight, Hallelujah. The, Lord, the Lord has told me to call you overcomers. Yes. That each of you is an overcomer. Now, when I tell you you are an overcomer, that should change your thinking. That you're no longer a victim. You're, you're no longer a, a, a defeat waiting to happen. You are an <laughs> overcomer. You, you, you need to think, think like an overcomer. And you need to speak like an overcomer. And you need to to make proclamations like an overcomer. You are an overcomer. I'm calling you up to a higher level. You are an overcomer. Now, to help us understand this, it's really good to look at the book of Revelation and the second and third chapter of Revelation, because in this, there are seven letters uh, to the churches, but in other words, we could say seven uh, letters to believers. There's seven letters to believers, and in the seven letters, there are seven problems addressed, and the problems may have different aspects to them, but we're just simply going to look at it. I'm just going to hit some highlights in these two chapters, okay? So it says uh, uh, there are some problems, and the problems, uh, just for example, they've left uh, their first love, mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. They've... Uh, had immorality, have had idolatry, yeah. they've had false teaching, and so obviously yeah. they have doubt and unbelief that comes from false teaching. Yeah. They've had all kinds of problems, but you know, all of those problems are in the fleshly realm, in the realm of the flesh. The other thing about these seven letters is that there are seven divine strategies on how to overcome problems. Now, it's interesting, the divine strategies are spiritual in nature. There are such things as forgiveness and repentance mm -hmm. and uh, holding on to the word of God, maturing, all kinds of, but it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's another aspect, all seven of these letters, that the people are overcomers. And it, it talks about really some interesting things because remember, culture is where you live and what you're doing. And, and so what we see in these seven letters is there, there is a progression of where you are uh, in the spiritual realm. So as you overcome these problems, you progress uh, to a different point, and that changes your identity. The first, it starts with spiritual food and eating from the tree of, of uh, life. But the tree of life is out in the garden uh, of heaven. And so it, it's a progression. So you start from there and you wind up in the temple, uh, and I'm talking about a heaven that's on the spiritual mm -hmm. realm, and so there is a progression, and so in each of these progressions, the identity changes, the identity of the overcomer changes, so how does the identity change? Well, you change your identity by running into the Lord, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. into uh, the secret place with him, and he speaks to mm -hmm. you, and he changes your identity, and you might say, well, no, my, my my identity is static, but let me tell you, your identity is dynamic. It changes oh, because yeah. in Revelation 2.17, he said, I'm going to give you a new name. Woo! I'm going to give you a new identity. <laughs> well, if you overcome, if overcoming is important to you, I'm going to give you the identity of an overcomer and you're going to be able to overcome any problem. 
but it's not a static. It's not a static because I give you a new name. And then you go on to uh, Revelation 317. Uh, um, no, 3, 312, I believe. It was 2, uh, 217 and 312. And 312, he is going to give you a new name. Okay, so he gave you an identity in the second chapter of Revelation. Now he's given them a, a new name, a new name, a new identity. Well, I, Isaiah had proclaimed it. He said it back in uh, 62, Isaiah 62, verse 2. Uh, it's a new name. You're going to be given a new name. My people are going to be given a new name, a new identity. You need a new identity to overcome the new problem. When the when the problems are mounting and getting bigger, you need a different identity. You need to embrace a higher level of identity. And how do we do that? Well, we always run into God, into that secret place. We spend time with him. Now, the way you get there is by rest and peace. Uh, you, you know, if you're anxious about something, you, you're not in that secret place. Because Jesus said, if you're uh, all you who labor and heavy labor, coming to, me. coming to me and I'll give you rest. So rest mm -hmm. is a gift. You have to receive your gift of rest and then there's where you learn and what do you learn well you learn about him so wh what what are we learning about we're learning about him and how we can be like him he said learn of me learn of me because i'm meek and lowly i'm talking about uh matthew 11 a and uh come and learn about jesus because god's top priority let me say this again top priority for you is to be like Jesus Amen. and to change you to be like Jesus. And he's changing you from glory to glory to be like Jesus. And so we've got to be in that secret place in that with rest and peace. And then we find our identity. And when, then we come out of that place and then we face our circumstances and then we change our circumstances because Proverbs, um, Let's see, uh, verse 32, uh, 16, I believe it's 12 or 16, verse 32 says that the man or the woman that can rule the spirit, if you can rule your spirit, mm. you're better than a man who conquers a city. Oh, wow. Or in other words, wow. a person can go in and control a city, change a city. And, okay. But if you can control your spirit, if you can control your spirit, you can change your environment. Okay, so I want you to focus in on here. This is about your spirit and about your spirit man. You have to well, control your spirit man. And how do you control it? With peace and rest. Mm, hallelujah. Okay, so because Colossians C, uh, says, uh, I believe it's 315, says that uh, we uh, let peace, the peace of God, rule your heart. Uh, and then it says with thanksgiving. And so well, how are we going to rule our heart with peace? Now, another way to look at it is if I'm going to make a decision, uh, then I need to have peace when I make the decision. I need to have peace about it. So I'm going to go where I have peace. So if I don't have peace, then I'm not ruling myself. I, I, I'm out of peace. Uh, and so we've got to be stay in peace. But there is a, the peace of, of God. Uh, surpasses knowledge so it's not something we can do with our intellect but it surpasses knowledge but it guards our heart and our mind so we've got to guard our heart and mind so if we can control our spirit man then we can change the environment the big the operative word in this message today is change, change. We're being changed from glory to glory into the image mm. of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so when problems come, you look not at how the problems are going to change, but you look at God, how God is changing you, because he's the one changing you. When we run into that secret place with him, we do it with peace and with rest. Let me give you an, a couple of examples of people who uh, walked in their identity. And I believe Peter walked in his identity. Amen. Uh, you know, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, uh, Jesus told Peter and the other disciples, he said, heal the sick, raise the dead, uh, cast, uh, cleanse the lepers, lepers and, and cast, cast out, out devils. devils. Okay. So we see Peter doing that in Acts. Acts uh, chapter 3, he's walking up to the temple and uh, uh, 
he sees this lame man and, and uh, looking for something. And he said, now, I don't have money, but such as I have, give, give I you. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to give what he has in the name of Jesus, rise and walk. He, and he didn't do it quick enough, so he reached there and grabbed him and jerked him <laughs> up. Uh, he's walking. He's a, see, there's a difference. And, and I want you to see that some people see their identity as uh, to lay hands on the sick and, and uh, they will recover. But Peter saw himself as, as the healer. healer. Okay. Woo, how, do you see, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a layer on of hands or you do you see yourself as a healer? That's a different identity. Mm, mm, totally a different mm, identity. Mm, mm. identity. Now, see, most people good, 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 approach good, good, good. God with their circumstances and ask God to change their circumstances, but not an overcomer. But because an overcomer is going to overcome the problems. And the way he overcomes or she overcomes is by running into God, running mm -hmm. into that mm -hmm. secret place, mm -hmm. staying at rest, staying at peace, and finding out the new identity, finding out the divine strategy, finding out the new, what God is wanting to do in the situation. Oh, I'm stop you right here just for a second. Okay. okay. At five o'clock this afternoon, the Lord gave me the word for 2022. Now, this is early. Normally, he does it in, in November, 1st of December, but at five o'clock this afternoon, all of a sudden in my spirit, man, it came, it came, it just rose up, and this is, it may not be everything, but it's, it's the, it's the rhyme that he gives me, and it's God makes all things new in 2022. Hallelujah. And I believe that Brother Fred has been talking about uh, the new creature. And, and becoming, um, you know, letting that new creature come forth and be changed uh, by the Lord. And so uh, God makes all things new in 2022. Hallelujah. So Peter didn't ask God to heal the lame man at the gate. Beautiful. He said, such as I have, give I you. Because Jesus had said, heal the sick, raise the dead. Uh, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, and freely have received and freely given. So he freely gave what he had. So he was the healer. And then in the fifth chapter, he's just going down the street, up and down the street, going to the temple, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm, being who he is. Mm -hmm. and, and his shadow overshadows people and they're healed. Hallelujah. He, because hallelujah. he sees himself, he sees his identity of who he is. Now, he, he not he's not the layer on of hands of the sick. Because he didn't, all these people laying in the street just waiting on Peter to come by, be who Peter is. No, he, he didn't go by and lay hands on them. He, he didn't go by and throw them some money. He just walked by going about doing uh, what he and was being to Peter. do, being who he was, yeah. being Peter. Now, he was, he caught hold of what Jesus said, heal the sick. And then Jesus also said, of course, raise the dead. And and they came and got Peter one time. He was on vacation, but they came and got him <laughs> and, and uh, took him to a, where a woman was dead. And and uh, her, she had been a, a real inspiration and help to the an encourager to the people in the community. And all the women were were uh, standing around and showing uh, Peter the garments. And but she was dead. And she and they were <laughs> saying, "Well, Dorcas." made me this uh, tunic and Dorcas made me this garment and Dorcas did this and Dorcas did that. Okay, now Peter ran them all out. Isn't that interesting? Hallelujah! He ran them all out because he's an overcomer. And you don't want uh, you don't want to hang around some people that are full of doubt and unbelief. <laughs> and, and so they had said Dorcas did this and Dorcas did that and Dorcas did this and, and, and Peter uh, prayed. He, he he got down and he prayed. And in a minute, he he looked over and he said something very interesting. He said, "Tabitha, arise! Oh glory! He's an overcomer." She said, "Up, uh, Hallelujah!" <laughs> he didn't say Dorcas because he he engaged her identity, mm -hmm. who she really was. Mm -hmm. uh, she her name was Tabitha, but she was called Dorcas. So I see that Peter thought identity was really important here. He didn't ask God. We don't see him asking God, oh, God, you you raise mm -hmm. her up. Because mm -hmm. Jesus had already told him to raise mm -hmm. her up. Mm -hmm. Jesus already told her. Matthew 10, 8 said, 
you raise up the dead. Oh, hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. to God. And so he, he, he spoke to her. He said, Tabitha, arise. arise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not the only one. He's not the only overcomer. Because I want you to think about Caleb. Uh, Caleb, uh, he went in there in Numbers 13. He went in with those spies. Uh, there were 12 of them went in, and only he and Joshua came out uh, with a good report uh, because they had a different spirit. They certainly did. They had an excellent spirit. And let me tell you, an overcomer ha has a, a mark, a seal upon them that of excellence. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a young boy, I, I used to uh, grade uh, cattle in competition and, and livestock. And some you'd give excellent to and some you'd give a good uh, rating to and some in poor and different ones. Uh, but but I'm telling you, overcomer all are sealed with the word excellence. Oh, hallelujah. 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 You are sealed with the word excellence. So mm. everything, when something comes to your your you're thinking you, you've got excellence sealed on you mm, because that's mm. the Holy Spirit. He, he, Jesus, the God, the Father only sees you mm. complete. You're accepted in the, the beloved. beloved. You are Amen. excellent. There is a more hallelujah. excellent way, and that's the way of love. Oh, see, hallelujah. We need to operate in love because that's where the energy comes from. Faith is energized, energized by, by love. love. And so God's going to give you the energy you need to overcome when you stay in his presence and in his uh, love because, see, overcoming comes out of abiding in the presence of God. Uh, that's an important statement right there. Overcoming comes out of abiding. abiding in the presence of the Lord. Overcoming. So Caleb, back to Caleb. Caleb uh, had all these 10 guys said, oh, we're just little grasshoppers in the, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. in the presence of all these uh, giants. Big giants. But uh, he said, we ought to go up because we shall well certainly, able. will certainly prevail mm -hmm. we're well able. Mm -hmm. we will certainly he, he knew see overcomers are confident they're confident in their god hallelujah and, and remember uh, joshua 1 9 he gave us a commandment to be courageous have I not i commanded you to be strong and of a good courage uh, we are commanded to be courageous Amen. And, and overcomers are courageous Amen. I, I want you to know that you overcomers make decisions out of their identity not out of their circumstances oh that's good phrase say it again please overcomers mm -hmm. make decisions out of their identity and not their circumstances see your ability listen to me your ability to overcome is directly related to your understanding of your identity. Your, let me say it again. Mm -hmm. Your ability to overcome is directly related to your understanding of your identity in Jesus Christ. Now back to the uh, to Revelation. Um, are we going to finish Caleb? We did. Oh, we did. Uh, he said, we're well able. I said he had a mark of excellence on yeah. him. He had an excellent and spirit. And at 80 years old, he said, give me my mountain. Yeah. Now, now, what I want you to know is that I have seen this. Well, we have seen many miracles in our lives, uh, bringing life over death uh, many times, uh, sometimes instantaneous, sometimes more of a progression. But what I've always seen is that these instantaneous miracles do not happen because we're asking God, oh, make this change, oh, make this change. That's the way most, most believers operate, or let's say most Christians operate. They want God to make changes, but overcomers see that they look at things differently. There are changes needed here, but first of all, I've got to get myself right. I've got to be uh, in the position where I need to be. Uh, and so let me change because I need a thousand more upgrades, maybe even a thousand <laughs> more upgrades this year to be like Jesus. Maybe I need I more and more. It doesn't matter yeah, how I'm many upgrades. Hallelujah. Every time I encounter a problem, it's an opportunity for me to upgrade who I am in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because my identity is not static. Amen. Because he's given out new names. He's given out new, new identities. 
Now, when you get to the last uh, uh, letter to the church, which is uh, Laodicea, and it looks like it's in the worst condition. Looks like it's in the worst condition uh, because it, uh, they think there's something. They think there's something that they're really not because <laughs> Jesus said, you are wretched mm -hmm. and pitiful and poor, poor and blind and naked. Well, <laughs> they were in pretty bad shape, but, but glory to God. He had a strategy for them. He had a strategy. They need to hold on to the word and mature and, and repent. Oh, you oh, know, hallelujah. That, that was the biggest word in uh, all those seven letters. They, they, they needed to repent. So if you're facing a problem, you, you better repent. Uh, first of all, just think about repenting. It, maybe we've been thinking the wrong way because we're thinking new ways here tonight in this in this message, a new way of thinking, uh, th to think like overcomers. And the Laodiceans, it was really interesting. See, the first letter, uh, when they overcame, they were able to be there in the garden in, in the spiritual realm and eat from the tree of life. And then they kept progressing. They put on a crown of life and they, by overcoming and they, and they put on robes of righteousness by overcoming. And then finally, uh, some of them got into the temple uh, and they were mm -hmm. memorial pillars in the temple of God. And But the Laodiceans, it started to me, look like the worst condition. They wound up in the best place because they were overcomers. Mm -hmm. They overcame and they sat at the throne with Jesus oh, and his throne. Hallelujah. 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 Don't you want to progress? Don't you want to progress? Mm -hmm. Don't you want to be an overcomer? This is all about uh, overcoming. You need to see yourself as an overcomer, not a victim, uh, not just somebody getting by, not just somebody just uh, uh, living a mundane life. See yourself as an overcomer. You you have been given everything you need in the spiritual realm, and mm -hmm. God has spiritual strategies for you to overcome each and every problem. You need to do it. You need to have that kind of a uh, of a uh, pattern in your uh, an attitude and, and thought pattern that, that you are an overcomer. Glory to God. I, I want you to know that it's your spirit man and you need to realize mm. your spirit man mm. is the overcomer. Mm. Let's build up our spirit man. Yeah, How do we build, do it? Yeah. With the word of God, yeah. of course, and with relationships yeah. with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And not only that, with spiritual people around you who will lift you up and encourage you I, I called you an overcomer tonight. I hope that encourages you to step up uh, to who you are and walk uh, on, this, on this earth as who you are, who God says you are. That's your identity. Mm -hmm. And realize that your identity is not fixed. But if, the closer you get to God, the more things you overcome, he's going to give you a new name, a new identity. Hallelujah. And he's going to give you more and more power. You know, there was one group that had a uh, uh, little power and they were facing big tests. I'm talking about Revelation and, and, and big tests. And he just said, hold, repent and hold on to the, to the word of God and because you're going to overcome because I'm going to give you a new identity. That's why we, yeah. to, to overcome, we've got to recognize who God says we are. And, and it's not a static concept. It's not a fixed concept because the more we overcome, we're going to have a new identity. Uh, glory mm -hmm. to God. It was prophesied all the way back in Isaiah, but it, oh, it's God. coming to pass today that when you encounter God, he's going to reveal to you who you are in Jesus Christ, and it's going to be an upgrade in your identity. Hallelujah. And when you get that upgrade in your identity, you can step back into any situation and call it, to be gone and it'll be gone to speak peace to the storm and it will be peaceful because oh, what hallelujah. I want you to what I wanted to say a while ago and just to close this out is that the miracles that I have seen have I'm talking about instantaneous miracles of people walking who had never walked before That's people right. uh, uh, living who had never uh, who had died when I've seen these things it's not because we're sitting there praying that God will do something, change something, fix something. It's because of our identity of who we are as an overcomer. We speak into a situation and things happen. It's the same for you. You run into that 
when you see a problem coming, you run into God. You be at rest. And if it's a bigger problem, you get more rest. Hallelujah. And more peace. Oh, yeah. Where you can be in that uh, secret place with him and let him upgrade your identity so that you can turn to that problem and tell it to go away. And it will go away because you are an overcomer in Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here. Amen, 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 amen. I'm going to open up the floor in just a moment, but I thank the Lord for this word. I want to be upgraded. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm believing for. Uh, I'm, I'm taking this message to heart tonight uh, that I want to be closer to the Lord and I want to be upgraded. Hallelujah. You know, Corey uh, wrote a comment uh, early on in this session tonight. Uh, Corey is, is from uh, California, and he said, as we renew our minds, then we become, we overcome, and I, I do believe that, and I believe that that's what Brother Fred has been uh, saying to us tonight, that as we begin to, to think of ourselves as who we really are in Christ Jesus, that's part of renewing of the mind, and that, that leads to overcoming, that leads to, to having victory, over the things in this world. And I believe that we are we are not part of this world, but we are kingdom people. That is our culture right there. We're not black, white, oriental. We're not uh, Native American. We're not, this is our culture. That's our culture. Uh, no, our culture is the kingdom. That's our culture. Hallelujah. And that's how we're to see one another that we are kingdom people and we're doing kingdom work and we're walking in our identity. And that's exactly what Peter did. I, I love that about the shadow, uh, just uh, walking down the, the sidewalk, doing his, doing his thing and, and that they would come and bring sick people on stretchers and, and just the shadow, his shadow uh, would bring healing. And uh, that is that is just phenomenal to me, amazing to me. And, uh, and so this is something that we can all get excited about, that we are, we are moving on up. We are being upgraded. 